year, the Commission launched a wide-ranging debate on the way EU fisheries are managed. But 60% of fish products here are imported from third countries. So an important part of reforming those policies involves looking at the way the EU's international agreements are managed. An issue discussed here today by the EPP group and representatives of the fishing industry. The EU is the main market for fish and aquaculture products globally. Its bilateral fishing agreements with third countries generate 40,000 direct jobs and provide fishing opportunities for around 3,000 European vessels. But its international agreements are also important for ensuring Europe has a role to play in the governance of oceans globally to achieve sustainability in the fishing sector. External policy takes two forms essentially, fishing agreements negotiated with third countries and participation in regional fisheries management organisations. Many agreements with developing countries allow EU fleets to fish excess stocks off their shores in exchange for financial compensation. In fact, in some countries, the EU's contribution represents up to 50% of public resources. So the money is not just for access, but also contributes to the development of the fishing sector. Now, the private sector, the ship owners, for example, contribute a third of those funds. And they don't mind making that investment. What they did make clear at the hearing, though, is their unhappiness at their lack of involvement in discussing how that money will be used. José Fontán Domínguez is president of the cluster of fishing organisations in third countries. He wants the EU to build in certain guarantees to the fishing agreements they negotiate, especially as many developing countries are still evolving democracies. What we want, what we are trying to achieve as far as the Commission and the EU are concerned, is to guarantee that the money gets to the local fishing sector for improving, for developing the local fishing industry. It's not for buying new cars for ministers, you know. We want the money to get to fishermen, to fishermen in the country with which we have entered into a cooperation agreement. One of the participants at the hearing pointed out that the EU's agreement with Morocco expires in a few months and no one in the fishing industry knows anything about whether or not it will be renewed. Carmen Fraga Estevez, chairwoman of the Fisheries Committee in Parliament and organiser of the event, also highlighted the lack of consultation with the fishing industry. People didn't have, they don't have a slight idea what is going on and what is going to happen there. I mean, and, and the, this is a, an economic activity and people they, they are, uh, they, this is the way of life they have. I mean, they have the right to know at least what is going on. Participation in regional fisheries organisations was also highlighted as a problem. The EU plays an active role in these international organisations that manage fish stocks in a given area. The European Commissioner has a mandate to speak on behalf of EU member states, but stakeholders in the private sector feel they're being excluded from the consultation process that defines the EU's position. I don't want to criticise her, but this is true that uh, there is, uh, and we have seen it today with ICAT thing, that uh, I, I don't agree, I don't understand. For example, the meetings that usually they have with the sector has been cancelled. <laughs> and then, I mean, uh, I don't think it's a normal when, when, when the Commission is saying the whole time that the sector should be more involved in governance, all these things, that at the end uh, we, are, we are getting less and we are doing it even worse. And then this is the complaint they have been doing here and I think they are right. And it is not just the fishing industry who wants their involvement to be increased. Under the Lisbon Treaty, the European Parliament must approve all fishing agreements with third parties. I think uh, we need to work together much better. I think uh, now with the Lisbon Treaty uh, that the Parliament has a, 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 a new role, we need to, to improve the way of working. I think we need to do it in a more transparent way. I need to, to really to, 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 uh, to put all the people, all the sector and all the ONGs, so everybody affected by that involved in a discussion and have a, a real discussion. We have been asking to be of service in joint committees in, in, in the partnership agreement. We have been asking to be of service in, in, in regional fish organisation, but in all meetings, and they are, they are trying to, to put us away. They may have launched the debate, but the message to the Commission here today is to increase consultation with fishing sector stakeholders and the European Parliament by formally integrating them into the process of defining fisheries policy.
You can check back with us for more reactions when the Commission publishes their proposal next year on eppgroup.eu. Thanks for watching.